Hey guys, Mr. Duncan here. Welcome back for some more part writing practice. Today's video will be looking at two part writing examples. Let's go ahead and get started. The first example that we're gonna look at today will consist of a Roman numeral analysis followed by part writing for the soprano, alto, and tenor voices. The AP Music Theory exam will have one of these questions. Today we'll be using a timer that I found on Google to help us keep track of our time as we go through our part writing. I also wanted to use a timer today to show you that it is possible to complete a part writing example in a short amount of time if we use an efficient part writing sequence. I like to think about a three part sequence. Part one, complete the Roman numeral analysis. Part two, Spell out each of the chords, make sure that we don't leave any notes out, include accidentals in the spellings. And finally, part three, part write each of the voices. Let's go ahead and get started with our timer. All right, so the first chord, they give us an F, A, F, C. In the key of F, that's a one chord, uppercase Roman numeral one. Our second chord, F in the bass, and we have a figured bass symbol of a four two. Four two is an inversion symbol. It's a third inversion of a seventh chord. F is our seventh, D would be our fifth, B flat would be our third, and G would be our root. So we have a two chord. We put a two, four, two. Remember to include your inversion symbols in your Roman numeral analysis so that we remember that we are inverted. We move to E in the bass. We have a figured bass symbol of six, five. Six, five is another inversion symbol for a seventh chord. This is first inversion. E would be our third. C would be our root, which means that we are on a major five chord. E moves up to F, back to a one chord. Bass moves F down to B flat, which is our four chord, up to C, which is a five chord. We do have a seven here, which will mean that we're gonna have a seventh chord when we move to our spelling. And finally, we end on our one chord. Now we've completed the first step. Step two, spelling out of each of the chords. One chord, F, A, C, two chord, G, B flat, D, and F. Make sure that you include the accidental. We make sure we don't miss any spellings. Next chord is a five chord, C, E, G. Make sure to include our seventh, E flat. Move back to a one chord, F, A, C. Four chord, B flat, D, F. Five chord, C, E, G. Remember our seventh, B flat. Finally, our one chord, F, A, and C. Now that we've completed our spelling, let's move to step three. There's one more tip that I think will help us, and that's the use of our spellings of the chords. Remember, there are certain members of chords for triads and for seventh chords that we need to always include. The root, the third, and if we're in a seventh chord, we must always include the seventh. If we need to omit a member of the chord, we can always omit the fifth if needed. We'll probably come across that in this example. What we'll do is we'll check off notes as we use them, especially the essential notes like the roots, thirds, and sevenths. Our second chord, we already have an F. We've used our seventh. We need a G, we need a B flat, a D if possible. So which of these notes can move stepwise or common tone to get to G easiest? A can step down to G, F can step up to G. So before I continue writing out the rest of this melody, let me think, how do I want this melody to sound? If I look at the given bass line so far, we have a lot of descending motion. As I look at the end, I'm trying to think, wow, that bass is really low. So I wanna make sure to not write too high in the upper voices, otherwise I might encounter spacing issues. That could give us difficulties with our part writing, especially if we're trying to keep things as smooth as possible. Because the bass line is descending, I'm gonna also try to make the other voices descend as much as possible. If we have to ascend, it's not a big deal. I'm going to take the tenor from A down to G, mark through, now I have my seventh in my root, I need a B flat, which of my remaining voices can get to B flat easiest. Soprano could step down or alto could leap up. Soprano is going to step down. Let's go ahead and take the alto from F down to D. Now we have a step in the tenor. We have a leap, but it's a small leap in the alto. We have a step in soprano. So we're looking good so far, and everything is descending. Let's move to the five chord as we race against the clock here. C, E, G, B flat. We already have an E, which is our third. We need a C, and we need a B flat. Are there any common tones? There are. B flat in our soprano. We have our seventh and our third. We need a C. Which of these two inner voices can get to a C the easiest? Alto can step down to C. We need our G. We can use it as a common tone in the tenor. Moving from our five chord to our one chord. I need to include my version symbol here. Remember that tendency tones want to resolve in a certain direction. Sevenths want to resolve down. The seventh of this chord is B flat in the soprano. That B flat will resolve down to an A. Are there any other common tones? C in the alto. I have two choices for the tenor, step up to A or step down to F. If we step down to F, we'll have a doubled root, one third and one fifth. That's gonna give us the best voicing. We're moving from an F chord to a B flat chord. Are there any common tones? We can hold F in the tenor. C, I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to D. 
I'm going to take this A and the soprano up to B flat. The spelling for this chord now has a doubled root, B flat and B flat. We have our third and we have a fifth. Let's move to our five chord, five seven. We have a C, we need an E and a B flat. We have a B flat and the soprano. We just need our E and a G if possible. Which of these two notes can get to E easiest? F can step down to E or alto can step up. Let's consider which option would be better. If the alto goes up to E, then we're moving into our ending with ascending motion. We talked about we want to try and get this to descend if possible. We give the descending motion to the tenor. G is our remaining note. Can D get up to G easily or down to G? Not really, not without a huge leap. So where can it get easily? It can get to C. Let's look at that. Now we've got C, C, E, and B flat, which gives us all the notes that we need to have in the chord and the root is doubled. If we need to omit a member of the chord, we can always omit the fifth. As we move into our last chord, let's look for common tones. Are there any? Yes. Alto can stay on C. The seventh of the chord always needs to resolve down. C, E, G, B flat. Our B flat and the soprano needs to come down to A. Let's take our tenor voice up. Now we have our full, complete Roman numeral analysis, spelling of the chords, and our part writing. Let's do a quick scan. Descending motion, we have some here. A up to F is a sixth. A to C is a third. Those are going to be fine. F to C is a fifth but that moves to a sixth, so we're good there. As we look at the second chord, we have descending motion in the bass and the alto voice. F to D is a sixth, which moves to E and C, which is also a sixth, so it's actually gonna sound good. As we move from beat three into the next measure, we have descending motion in the tenor and the soprano voices. G to B flat is a third, and they move down. Parallel thirds are also gonna sound good. Moving to our next beat, we have ascending motion in the alto and soprano. C to A is a sixth, D and B flat is a sixth, more parallel sixth. This is probably gonna sound pretty good just looking at what we have so far. As we move to our five chord, we have descending motion in the tenor and the alto. F to D is another sixth, more parallel sixth. And as we move from our five chord to our one chord, there are also no issues. So now we've completed our analysis. It's been under 15 minutes. We've got time to sit back, relax, and take a listen to our creation. Listen to that one more time. Now, at the time that we have remaining, we can also go back and check just to see how smooth our creation is as we move from note to note. I like to do this voice by voice. C to B flat is one step. B flat to A would make two. A to B flat would be three. And four steps in the soprano. How about the alto? F down to D would be two, down to C would be three, four, five, and the alto. How about in the tenor? A down to G is one, two, three, and then four. So in our example, we've used 13 steps. Most of them were actually steps. We only had one leap here in the alto voice. This is a very, very smooth example of how to complete this part right now. And as you can see, we beat the clock. We had time to listen to our example multiple times. We also had time for me to explain why we were doing certain things. If there's time for me to explain it in a video, there's definitely time for you to do it as you're working on your part writing. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this timer now and we'll reset it and we'll move on to our second question. This next example is gonna be presented in a slightly different format. This time we're given a completed Roman numeral analysis and it's up to us to create all four parts. For the AP Music Theory exam, there'll be one of these questions and we'll have about 10 minutes to complete it. If we remember our three-step process, step one was writing out the Roman numerals. Check. Step two, spell out the chords. And step three is do the part writing. We can actually go ahead and start on step two for this one. Let's go ahead and get started with our timer so we can keep ourselves accountable. All right, first chord, one chord, E minor chord, E, G, B. Next chord is a five, four, three, a four. Now on the AP Music Theory exam this year, there will not be any secondary dominant chords, but we've seen these. So let's just quickly talk through how we go about figuring out what this chord is. First, look at what chord comes after. We're going to be moving to a four chord. So here we're moving to an A chord, A, C, E. The question is, what is the five of that A chord? Go up a fifth from that A. A, B, C sharp, D, and E. E would be the five, four, three, of four. So we'll spell out our E dominant 
seven chord E, G, B, D. We have to include G sharp because G sharp is not in the key signature. In order for this chord to be a dominant seven chord, make sure that we include that accidental. Next we move to our fourth beat. 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 Here we have a two half diminished six five. Let's start with the two in the key of E minor. F sharp is two. F sharp, A, C, and E. So we move to a one six four E, G, B. Five chord, B, D needs to be sharp. Remember to include your accidental, F sharp. In order for this to be a major chord and a major five, D needs to be sharp. We move to a six chord, nice deceptive resolution, C, E, and G. All right. We've completed the Roman numeral analysis, our chord spelling. Now it's just up to us to do the part writing. Remember, we can use everything that we wrote up here to help us ensure that we use all of the notes that we need to. Roots, thirds, and if we have a seventh chord, the seventh. We can omit the fifth if we need to. Here we have E, E, G, and B, so we have a full spell in here. All right. These Roman numerals are also indicating which notes should be in the bass. If we're looking at a five, four, three, a four, we have an inverted chord here. We need to have a B in the bass. Let's go ahead and fill in our bass line first, given all the help with our Roman numeral analysis. Four, six. A would be our root if we were in root position, but we're in first inversion, so C is our root. Two, half diminished six, five. Six, five is first inversion, so A is going to be our root. 1, 6, 4, and B is second version. We have a B. As we move to this 5 chord, that's also going to be a B. On these examples, you can use quarter notes and half notes. Instead of having a B repeat, I'm just going to make it a half note. So I'll try to do this neat so it doesn't look too messy. And now, bass has a half note, beat 1 and beat 2. And on a 6 chord, so the bass will move to a C. Now we have our bass line complete. In this seventh chord, we used a B, cross that out. In this seventh chord, we used an A, cross that out. We don't have any other sevenths that we need to worry about. All right, let's look for common tones and stepwise motion. Are there any common tones in between these two chords? Yes, we can keep the alto on E. Which one of these notes can get to G sharp easier, B or G? Let's take the G up a half step in the soprano. Remember to include your accidental. Now we just need our seventh. B can leap up to D, no problem there. Let's check for any parallel motion. So far we are ascending in the tenor and ascending in the soprano, but those are not parallel fifths and they're not parallel octaves, so we're good so far. Next we move to an A minor chord. We need an A and we need an E. Remember, leading tones want to resolve up. Think of this G sharp as leading tone. We ascend chromatically from G to G sharp. We can continue that path up to our A. Can we get a fifth common tone somewhere? We can in the alto. Tenor, move down to C here. So our third is doubled. Two half diminished six five. We already have our third. Are there any common tones? Yes, we can hold our C in the tenor and we can hold our E in the alto, which gives us everything except for our root F sharp, which we will put in the soprano. As we move to our one six four chord here, is there any common tones? There are not. Let's look for stepwise motion. C can step down to a B. Now we talked about the bass before. It's gonna stay on B here. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the tenor that I did with the bass. Let's see how that works out. I need a G and I need an E. Well, I've already got an E in the alto voice. So I'll carry that as a common tone. And I need a G. Soprano can step up from F sharp to G. Five chord, B in the bass, B in the tenor. This E can step down to D sharp. This G can step down to our F sharp. Remember to include your accidental. We move from the five chord to a six chord. We need to be careful for parallel motion. If I were to take this B up to a C, I would have B to B as an octave, moving to C and C as another octave. Parallel octaves is not good. I'm gonna take this B down to a G. All right, now we just need the third of this chord. And yes, the time of day did change because my camera died. Let's go ahead and finish this out. We've got 59 seconds remaining. Which of these two upper voices can get to E the easiest? D sharp can step up to E, F sharp can step down. Why don't we go ahead and make them both do that? And we will be doubling the third of the chord, which is what we want in a deceptive resolution. All right, we've got 36 seconds left. Let's take a listen to our example.
why don't we listen to that one more time? So there you have it. We created two more part writing examples using an efficient sequence and process to create our parts. They gave us smooth intervals in all of the voices. Let's go and double check just to see how smooth this example is. So G to G sharp will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in the soprano. Alto stays on E until one, two. And then the tenor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, two very smooth part writing examples. Made sure to not have any parallel fifths. Checked as we did our part writing. We made sure to resolve tendency tones in the correct direction. And we resulted in two beautiful melodies. Why don't we listen to both one more time? Here's our descending melody. And melody number two. thing I want to point out really quickly. If we look back to this seventh chord built on the two half diminished, the seventh of that chord was our E natural, which would resolve down in this chord, but it doesn't because we have a one six four suspension. So then it finally resolves down to the next beat. Thank you guys for checking in. Love and miss you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. If you have any questions, reach out at any time. For those of you that also like puns, feel free to leave a comment. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Take care.